Hello, hopefully you've watched the first video on precipitation titrations because today we're going to go through some of the more advanced concepts, some of the nitty gritty details in precipitation titrations. Uh, really this video is aimed towards high achievers who want to really nail down all the nitty gritty with it when it comes to precipitation titrations and some of the more interesting edge cases. The first question I want to ask is why does, um, why does the AGCO precipitate before the um, AG2CRO4 because that was a critical assumption that we made in the previous video that we said that okay look the chlorines are going to preferentially react with the, with the silver chloride before they react with the chromate um, that's important otherwise our, in, our indicator would, would go off too soon so why is this well one, I mentioned that it was to do with the KSP. And actually, last video I said, I said that the KSP for the, I said that, that the KSP for silver chromate is actually uh, lower, right? Um, and so it is a, is a higher, right? And so we recall that a high KSP, a, a high KSP means high solubility. Because if we if we have a look at for example um, you know the KSP of silver chloride right we, we recall that KSP is nothing but this so if you think about something that has a high solubility we're gonna have a lot of these ions in solution right we're gonna have a lot of silver a lot of chlorine the concentration is really high in the water. And then, so when we take the product of them, we should get a really big number, right? Imagine it was like seven times seven, which is like 49. It's a very big KSP, right? If we have very small amounts of each one, like 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, the KSP is very small, like 0 0.01. So, but if you have actually have a look at this, and you say, oh my God, look at this, right? Silver chloride actually has, is actually higher than my silver chromate. And so actually, doesn't that mean that our silver chromate should precipitate first since it has a lower KSP? Isn't that a bit weird? So we can actually, I'll, I'll run through to you exactly why that's uh, so. Um, and the reason is because if you have a look at the KSP of silver chromate, we have it as Ag plus squared over CrO4 minus 2. And so when we actually do the calculations to solve it, we're going to see that it becomes quite different in the solving process and that, um, and, and I'll do this now, I'll fast forward through it and then um, we'll see how the answer compares for each. Okay, so we can see here that um, that, the, that actually when we do the calculations, we can see that our silver carbon, our silver chromate is actually having a higher solubility than our silver chloride. This is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5, versus this is 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5. So actually silver uh, uh, chromate is actually around five times more soluble um, because this has 2x here. So if this is five times more soluble, then what does that tell me? Well, that tells me evidently that um, you're gonna need, that if the, it means that I'll need five times, you know, as much of my silver and my chromate to be in solution before precipitate forms, right? Now, if you think about that, if I need, so, so maybe for my silver chloride, I only need, you know, if I have my silver chloride, you know, I don't need that much for a precipitate to occur, right? Um, 
anything more than, let's say, these six ions will begin to form a precipitate. Form a precipitate at the bottom. But for my silver chromate, because its solubility is so much higher, what's going to happen is that we're going to need... Is that you'll need uh, five times as many, right? You're going to need a many, many, many. So you're going to need have... So it's only once you have, you know, five you know, five times as as many, here we have um, five times three, as here's only one times three. Only then will we begin, we begin to see precipitation. Um, since the kind of threshold for precipitation is much higher in our silver chromate than it is in our um, silver carbonate, uh, silver chloride. I should have drawn two silvers here, sorry. Uh, but you get the point. Right, um, our silver chromate has a much higher solubility, and therefore it will precipitate uh, with less intensity. Okay, so that was the first question that I wanted to to answer. You know, why is this the case? So, because uh, silver chloride has lower solubility than silver chromate. So, my second question is: Let's have a think about this one. What I showed you in the previous one is that I had my burette full of silver. And in my conical flask, I have my chlorine sitting here. Now, when we do a titration, it actually uh, for acid base, it actually didn't matter if we put the strong acid in the burette or the strong acid in the conical flask. Uh, you know, I can have uh, acid in the burette or a and then base in the conical flask, or I could have acid in the conical flask and base in the burette. It does not matter. In this case, it doesn't matter. Could I perhaps uh, switch it up? Could I put my silver in the in the uh, conical flask and put my and put my chlorine, um, you know, the the uh, solution to be analyzed in my burette? Is this one possible? If if not, why? This is not possible. We you cannot do this one. The chlorine must be in the conical flask. Why is that? Well, let's have a look at what's happening here, right? What's happening here? Oh dear. We have so many uh, silvers with, with so many chromates that they're all that our, our indicator is going to go off instantaneously, right? Because our silver biggest is going to form the silver chromate precipitate. And then, in fact, when you add in the, the, the uh, chromate, it's going to instantaneously turn red. Your indicator is going to tell you it's time to stop before you even before you even started. So this this won't work. So the so we absolutely have to put the silver in the burette and the chlorine in the conical flask. It cannot be the other way around like it is for acid base. Let's have a think about the next question. So my next question is let's have a think about you know our titration process again. So, you, so, you, so you're going to drop in your silvers and drop in more the silvers, they're going to react with the chlorines, fantastic, right? Okay, nice, cool, right? So, so my next question is, what is the concentration of chlorine at equivalence point? So remember, equivalence point, equivalence point in the context of a precipitation titration would be when the moles of, let's say, chlorine um, is equal to the moles of silver added. And so what I've demonstrated here is a is an equivalence point because the the uh, the uh, moles of silver that I've added equals exactly the number of uh, chlorines that I have, right? So my question is, what is the concentration of chlorine at equivalence point? Is it zero? Because it doesn't look like there's any free chlorines here, right? They all, they've all been precipitated. Not so fast. Actually, there will be a concentration of chlorine at equivalence point. It's not going to be zero. Why is that? 
Well, it's because silver chloride still does have some natural solubility, right? Silver chloride um, has some natural solubility. All salts have some level of natural solubility. So yes, the, um, there will be a specific concentration of chlorine at equivalence point. Um, it's not zero. I believe. The next concept that we're going to cover is the blank titration for um, a precipitation titration. Why do we need a blank? What's the point? So let's go back to our previous diagram. If I grab this bad boy again, right? <laughs> and for the purposes of, of this discussion, let's ignore the kind of natural solubility of silver chloride. Um, it doesn't really affect our discussion. It's going to make our, make our life complicated though. So let's just kind of ignore it, okay? So we've reached the equivalence point. Fantastic, right? So the actual, so, so the number of, you know, so, so we can see that, that at equivalence point, the, uh, the, uh, you know, we can see with our eyeballs that the number, that, that the moles of chlorine is five, right? But the problem is we can't see atoms, right? That's a, that's a, that's a problem that, that, that we've been cursed with. We can't see the number of atoms that there are, which means that we don't know that we should stop at this point we're going to keep adding in silver because that because that indicator hasn't gone off yet right so we're going to keep adding in silver now we've added in six silvers we still don't know that anything has happened so let's keep adding in another one now and only now the indicator suddenly goes off right it turns red and you're like oh it's time to stop right so therefore this is the end point. Sorry, so this is the equivalence point. At the end point, though, the end point, you actually say, oh, the moles of chlorine is actually equal to seven. Hmm. There's this discrepancy, right? There's this discrepancy of two, and that's bad. So, because this, this, I mean, it's not this bad in real life, um, because you have more than five atoms of chlorine, but. This just as, as an example, we can see that it, it can be quite bad, right? So what this actually means is that we need to have a better way to account for the silver atoms that we're going to be using to react with the chromate. And the way to do that is with a blank titration. So what is a blank titration? Well, let me show you, let me show you. So blank titration is like a normal titration, right? Except there, except what you do is you don't have any chlorine in your water. You have pure deionized water, okay? You add in the same amount of indicator as you normally would have. So in this case, I have one drop of indicator. Um, if I had used two drops of indicator here, if I had two drops, then I better put in two drops here as well, right? But we'll just stick with one. I have one drop of indicator. Okay, so let's write that down. Now, why does it have to be the same amount of indicator? Well, because imagine if you used, you know, twice as much here, right? That means you're going to need twice as many silver atoms to new, to, to fully see the color change, right? And that's going to be invalid because now you've used twice as much silver, right? Anyway, so you, so you put in the same amount of indicator as before, and then you simply um, titrate until you see a color change. So you add in the silver. Ah, uh, I see. I need the two drops of silver. I need two atoms of silver to to have this color change. And so now I know. Okay, okay, okay. Now I know. Right? Now I know. Right. So therefore, um, subtract. Right, because this two atoms of silver, what this tells me is that, hey, Bob 
it takes two atoms of silver to see a color change, right? It takes two atoms of silver to get the color change. It, you need two atoms just for the color change. So your answer of seven here, well, that's actually telling me, and then it's not really seven, it's, it's actually seven includes two for the color change, so there must only have been five chlorine atoms in there. We offer physics, chemistry, and math tutoring. For more insightful explanations like this one, head to tutorgum.com.